Shumra Bjug. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Sherlock Sher Listen, the podcast that takes a pop of culture. Sherlock Sher Listen. 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 Sure look, Benjamin, this week we have new trailers for something called Reminiscence, probably, and something called Infinite, also probably, both of which I have neither seen nor heard of, so you're going to give us a delightful insight, <laughs> one would imagine. One then, would Benjamin, then we have some cancellation news from Netflix about shows that weren't very good anyway, not coming back. <laughs> then, Benjamin, speaking of Netflix, we're going to take a look at Sweet Tooth. And we're going to try to pronounce sweet tooth correctly every time, which is a hard thing to say, Ben, being Irish. And then I think that's it, Ben. That's all I've got. (laughs) Sure. Listen, Michael, if that wasn't enough, we're going to be taking a look at the history of Loki within the Marvel Universe and the MCU and those old mythological roots, Michael, because this very Wednesday, Odin's Day, uh, we'll be seeing his new trailer appear. We'll be seeing his new show on Disney Plus. Benjamin, I'm glad you said that because... You you said if that wasn't enough, and it isn't really. What what the things I said aren't enough for a whole podcast. No, we probably wouldn't make much of a podcast out of doing four bits of news. Four little bits of news, Ben. Speaking of four little bits of news, what in the holy high hell, Ben, of all hells, is reminiscence? <laughs> Michael, 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 Michael. Somebody, yeah, uh, mainly Westworld co-creator, uh, whose name escapes me. I think it's Yana something. All right. Uh, Michael, I would hazard a guess that very, very recently, mm. perhaps after a drunken night, Go on. one Westworld co-creator came home, ordered themselves a pizza, right? Mm, ordered delicious. themselves a pizza. They were a little bit buzzed, a little bit drunk, okay? Tired. Tired, right. Michael. And they sat down in front of any network televisual channel. Right. And on that channel was one bloody Inception the movie. I've seen it, yep. Yeah. Christopher Starring Nolan. one Leonardo DiCaprio son <laughs> and one Cillian Murphell. Um, so <laughs> that's one of the worst jokes you've ever done, but it's tickled me right on the funny <laughs> bone. I have to say, I mean, it's not clever, it's not witty, but mwah, it's good. Michael, I'm fairly certain that's what it says on my business card. Benjamin yeah. Colibri, not clever, not witty, but mm, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this co-creator sat down on the couch, Michael. Took a look at the television screen and on came the movie and they were so drunk and so buzzed they fell asleep with a slice of pizza on their chest and woke up in the morning, Michael, and said, oh, I've had an idea for a film. Oh. nobody said. Benjamin. Nobody said. Benjamin, you've just also described the plot of Inception. That is so meta. (laughs) That is so meta, And nobody said to them, no, no, Westworld co-creator. That's just the plot of the 2011 film Inception. Yes, with Christopher Nolan. With Christopher Nolan. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's what Reminiscence is, Michael. It's Hugh Jackman misses his his love partner. Okay. Builds a machine that can bring him back in his memories. Because in the future, it's all floody. And it's no fun. And nostalgia oh. becomes an addictive thing. So he keeps traveling back in his mind, Michael. Right. To the time when he was together with his love partner. And is Hugh Jackman's love partner a man? You loved uh, Hugh Loveman. <laughs> yeah, Hugh Loveman. Yeah. Um, Hugh Jackman's love partner is a woman. It's oh. uh, the Irish actress Olivia so, Wilde. No, it's not Olivia Wilde. Olivia Wilde is not Irish. Yes, she is. No, she isn't. She went and studied at the Gaiety School of Acting, Michael. She's Irish. She's not Irish. She is Irish. She's not Irish. <laughs> yeah, numpty. All right, well, um, who, who's the Irish actress? <laughs> It's the girl from Peaky Blinders. Olivia oh, Coleman. Georgina. Oh, it's not Olivia Coleman. Where do you come up with this stuff? Hmm. The internet, mostly. Ah, uh, the internet's good, isn't it? Yes. It's a great place. Anyway, sorry, Michael. That was. That was. Uh, the main crux of it and of course the future is a big damn place and it's no good Michael and it's no fun and people shouldn't uh, do things in the real world because nostalgia is more addictive and so there's become a whole subculture of rich people paying for this kind of trips in this machine to go backwards in time and stars Hugh Jackman and Tandy Newton and then the other woman whose name escapes me currently at the moment very sorry to her Tandy Newton is back in it 
Tanya Newton's back in it because she played such a major role in Westworld, Michael. She did. Obviously, her and Westworld co creator get on like the house <laughs> on fire. Benjamin, it's great that. Do you want me to edit over the name of the actual person you're talking about? I absolutely do not okay, want you to do good. that. Um, unless you can do it in a very funny way and say, like, Yana da da da. In I'll a do very it in my like... voice. It'll be very funny. The listeners will really enjoy it. <laughs> you should just get a text to speech woman to read it out and say, Okay, I'll do that then. <laughs> That'll be fun. Um, so in that particular case um, Mick the movie is all about how he finds out all the dirty secrets about his former lady friend who maybe wasn't as wonderful as he thought oh, and there's no. a web of intrigue um, and he can't really it becomes well it looks as though it becomes that he can't really tell the difference between the present and the past and oh, where classic. am I am I in my memories or am I in, in the real life yeah is the top ever going to stop spinning or was it his wedding ring the whole time dun 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 um, so yeah it's a bit like Inception meets Taken right. and uh, that's that's what we're working with take exception take exception taking exception will. or Inception and yeah Um. Yeah, so look, is it going to be amazing? Maybe. I don't know. It looks sure. it, it has the cinematic stylings of one Christopher Nolan. Oh. Um, and it's a little bit like The Prestige, only I always think that with any film with Hugh Jackman in it, because Hugh Jackman was in The Prestige. Mm. He was in The Prestige, if you remember, also by Christopher Nolan. Yeah, I thought The Wolverine was just Prestige Man gets metal bones. It wasn't. It wasn't. Benjamin, what other trailers were there? We also got a trailer for Infinite. Infinite. And why am I saying it that way? Why am I saying it that way? Infinite. Why am I saying it that way? Why are you from Southie? Why am I from Southie? Because it stars one Marky Mark. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> well played. So here is... Here's the plot of this, right? The second trailer for that dropped this week. The previous trailer we failed to mention, and I can't believe we did, Michael. Because Never what it is... It. It, the, the first trailer is an interrogation scene between... <laughs> One Mark Wahlberg. Marky Mark Wahlberg, yes. Marcus Wahlberg. Mm-hmm. And Academy Award winner, Chichuel Efubor. <laughs> okay, you've completely butchered that. I'll dub yeah, that. Yeah, I do it all the time. I can I'll overdub that later as well. Efubor? <laughs> Is it Efubor? I think it... I, I'm not, I'm not going to... I'm not going to correct you, Ben, until I'm right. You carry uh, on. Well, you're automatically right because I always get it wrong. Anyway, Academy Award winner, Baron Mordo. Um... <laughs> And he's in it, and uh, Mark, Marky Mark is being interrogated, and he says, okay, which of these items is yours? And he keeps taking out items out of a very old-looking case, Michael, and presenting them to Mark Wahlberg. And Mark Wahlberg is going, I've never seen that in my life. What are you doing? What are you talking about? And he keeps doing that. And it turns out, Michael... What's going on? ...that these two are old rivals. Oh. And it is Highlander 2021. No, it isn't. It's Infinite, Michael, where different beings live entire lives until they're reincarnated into the same body and they have to unlock their memories to get unlimited potential um, as they move forward. So it's Highlander, but not Highlander. Wait, into the same body? Are they moving forward in time or are they in a loop? They get reincarnated into the same body every time, Michael. So they die for a little bit and yeah. they get reincarnated because they're an infinite, Michael. Right, right. But they move forward in time. So Marky Mark... Has looked like Marky Mark for thousands of years. Apparently so. Uh, or they just di live different lives. The second trailer seems to imply that they just live different lives in a new body, but it's the same soul, Michael. Oh. Um, and it, it seems to be a little bit inspired by that weird part of Buddhism where the Dalai Lama has to track down his... his. Uh, they, they track each other down. It's the Dalai Lama and the... His arch nemesis. No, I wish he had an arch nemesis. That'd be great. I'd watch the heck out of that movie. Um, no, there are two key parts to whatever sect of Buddhism that is. And each one finds the reincarnated form of the other throughout the different lives. And do they have to beat each other up? Um, no, they don't. They're, they're buds. They're oh, best. Ah, get it? Best Benjamin. buddhists. Yeah, very good. Benjamin, exactly. isn't that the plot of Hancock? Isn't that the plot of the film Hancock? Yes, it is the plot of the film Hancock. Not Hancock, Finn. Hancock. That's what I said, Hancock. Yeah, no, we'll drop that now, I think. Benjamin! <laughs> is it any use? <laughs> no. Does it look uh, good? I don't know, Michael. It hasn't come out yet. No. But it's got Marky Mark in it trying to hold his own with serious actors, so I'll watch it. Oh, good. Does he have a t-shirt on? No, that's the best part, Michael. There's an entire scene in the trailer where he's lying on his, his military-style cot. Okay. And he's got both arms 
cross behind his head. So his entire torso is on display. Oh, my God. Oh, very good. Like, oh, just getting a little stretch out here. Stretching, Before stretching I, uh, out my muscle. I can't do Marky Mark. <laughs> Stretch out my, Michael my Jackson. muscles. Full Michael Jackson. I've got a little bit of Michael Jackson. <laughs> Hi, Marky Mark. You want to stretch out your muscles? <laughs> I'm an infinite. Um, oh, terrible podcasting, Michael. Anyway, he's doing yes. a full stretch for Good. for the ladies. I, I don't think, think it is for the ladies. No, though. it's not for the ladies. It's for the it's Marky Mark for fans. The, for the <laughs> for the Southie boys in the audience. Oh, look how Jack Marky Mark is. Oh, oh, sick. Um, and that's that's pretty much going to be the entire movie, Michael. I'll watch ben, it. I won't. I've no interest. You've lost me. <laughs> You've completely lost me. Sounds boring. Sounds boring and terrible. Speaking of things that are boring and terrible, though, Ben. Yeah. Um. Apparently, apparently, Ben, we might have misjudged Jupiter's legacy. Okay. Because we appear to have been in the minority, and most people say it's actually quite decent. Hmm. Now, Ben, I don't believe most people. Well, most people are generally wrong. Most people are generally wrong, Ben. Look at the Democrats or the Republicans. Bad eggs, the lot of them. I don't even know. Benjamin. Third party option. Bring it in now. Anyway, Ben. We don't even live there, Ben. We can Doesn't vote matter. for Miggle D. Higgins. It's grand. Doesn't matter. We're Just all vote. beholden to the whim of the empire of America. Come on. Just vote for Miggle D. Higgins every time and everything will be grand. Can't go wrong. Benjamin. Yeah. Jupiter's Legacy has been cancelled by Netflix. There's no season two. Show oh. me your most disappointed face that you have available to you. It's your normal face. Yeah, just, doing your, glum, just doing your, your normal, normal face. face. Um, life is a disappointment, Michael, and my face reflects that at all times. Yes. Um, yeah, so look, Jupiter's Legacy was cancelled. Um, we are in the minority. I have to say, I watched episode one, Michael, um, and my biggest complaint... Alongside yes. yourself would be worst aging up I've ever seen. No good at all, especially no when half your program revolves around it. Uh, yeah, like a huge chunk of that show relies on that, and no good. So I watched that, and I think I watched the second episode as well. And I, I'll be honest with you, Michael, didn't hate the gore elements they were starting to bring in. There were some pretty interesting, like the the deceased father's ghost bring him the vision. That was that was pretty grim, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Ben. Yeah. There's the boys. And there's Invincible. Much better. We don't need it. We don't need another thing about dodgy Superman. Nobody asked about it. <laughs> we Nobody don't need it. <laughs> we don't need any more dodgy Superman programs. Uh, I think one of the things that really put left a taste in my mouth mm -hmm. was uh, the the very Christian undertone to yeah, whatever yeah, their very... version of Omni-Man is. Utopian. The utopian. Yeah. Very, very... Very Not Christian. Not Maya. This is a God-fearing house. And it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You're a God. I, I, I think that was the irony of it, though, Ben. Yeah. I, I think that's the silliness of it. And then we had uh, Knock Off Darkseid as well. <laughs> He's and, great. He's great. Do you see him, Ben? His big exploding chest. His big exploding chest. He's got an... Uh, he's black heart, Michael. He's got an antimatter heart. He's shooting um, lasers through people. They very much went to the the image comic school of superpowers. He's got a, he's got an antimatter heart. What does that mean? Whatever I need it to mean. Yes. In a given moment. Means. Yes. Have you ever seen Marky Mark's torso? That's because Have you ever he seen has Marky an antimatter Mar heart. <laughs> Marky Mark's career powered by antimatter. Yeah, that would make um, sense. Yeah, I mean, it makes about as much sense as Jupiter's legacy. Um, oh, you've taken them down a notch there, but zing. But anyway, it doesn't matter, Michael. Uh, irrelevant. Everyone else was wrong because they've cancelled it. Um, so I think maybe what happened, Michael, is we got a little bit of a little bit of uh, critical reception in a positive sense, but obviously the audience scores didn't mark up. Yeah, um, yeah people weren't watching. Uh, to be honest, Ben, it looked cheap. It, the and yeah. like when when all of your promotional material is fake old people. You're not you're you're in a bit of trouble there. How are you gonna get the punters in? Was it Josh Jamel? Was that who it was? Yeah, I think it's Josh Jamel, yeah. I can't remember. I can't even remember who it was. I know it was Leslie Bibb. But was it also Josh Jamel? I tell you what we were wrong on, Michael. Go on. Army of the Dead. Go on. Army of the Dead has done phenomenally well. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's no phenomenally good. Phenomenally well. The only good thing about it, Ben, is the ever so slight implication that it's aliens or the ever so slight implication that it might be in a time loop. Yeah, the occasional robot head for yeah. no reason. And you're just like, what? I Why like it. It was, stuff? What's going it on? was like 
just put a fucking rake put a fucking rake of easter eggs in it and then we can go anywhere we want in future ones and people will be like I can't wait till they get back to the robot heads I I'm, can't wait I can't wait till they get back to if it was a time loop that'd be good like I'd watch that yeah that's how they got you Ben I'd watch Army of the Dead 2 Electric Boogaloo it's a time loop um, but Michael I, I'm I'm fairly certain I'm fairly certain and this is huge conspiracy theory here but I am fairly certain that Netflix has Screen Rant on the payroll because all I have seen from Screen Rant since both Army of the Dead came out and Bloody Jupiter's Legacy is a milieu, Michael. Mm. A milieu of articles just thrown at me being like, here's why this little side character is amazing mm, in Jupiter's Legacy. <laughs> here's why this little character is stunning in Army of the Dead. And I'm like, no. No. no, no, she's real generic. Benjamin. Yeah. Somewhere. Why are we talking about Army of the Dead? How have we ended up back at Army of the Dead? Sorry, because we're on Netflix stuff. Somewhere, Ben, Anton Chekhov is spinning in his grave. Just just on a whirly gig. Because he's like, you can't put all of that stuff in Act 1 and 2 and then not show it in Act 3. Benjamin, they said the, the creepy crawly zombies, they come back to life when they get wet. And then they never got wet. It never rained. <laughs> they showed us the robot ones. Nothing ever comes of it. They implied there might be a time loop. Nothing ever comes of it. Nothing that they should have just called that film. And then nothing ever comes of it. I tell you what, Michael, I, I was trying to think of a way that, that could have been utilized in a much better fashion. And my, my rewrite of that movie would involve water towers. Right, go on. Or a burst pipeline. Um, Benjamin, I'd say that was in it at one point and someone cut it out for time or budget or something. Yeah, because I would have watched that. That would have been interesting to see the stakes. Especially, especially, yes. Michael, when the daughter has to run off on her little side mission, which is pointless. Stupid, stupid point mission. Stupid. What a great way to add tension to that scene. A young lady who's not as capable as the rest of the team has to go up against the lower tier of zombie that isn't really a threat unless it's in massive numbers. And then all of a sudden, Michael, there's massive numbers. Yeah, but then, Ben, she kills those of the super zombies as well. Anyway, we're not talking about Army of the Dead, Ben. We are. That's what we're doing. We're not. We're moving on because Army of the Dead oh, can oh. go suck a dry lemon. Benjamin, a dry lemon? There's no wet ones. No. Until the sequel Come Benjamin here to me. Do you have any wet lemons Do you have any dry mm. ones They're going to call a lemon. Army of the Dead 2 Wet Zombies Wet Lemons Yeah, um, yeah Benjamin, go on You've watched Benjamin, other things I watched another thing On the Netflix Ben And Benjamin Have you ever heard of A post-apocalyptic scenario Yes Good 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 Have you ever heard Of a flu-like global pandemic Yes Benjamin, have you ever heard of a flu-like global pandemic that's killed over a million people? It's only my bloody life, Michael. It's bloody everyone's life, Ben. And that's <laughs> the story, Ben, of the fil of the televisual series on Netflix, Sweet Tooth. Okay. So, Ben, in the future or the now, there's right. a there's a global pandemic, Ben. Mm -hmm. And you know you have the global pandemic because your little finger goes all wobbly. Uh, sorry? You, ha you have the global pandemic when your little finger goes all wobbly. Oh yeah, same way you know you have coronavirus if your pinky toe curls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's actually okay. a clever little way of um, making it obvious to the viewer that someone has the virus if their finger starts twitching. It's cool. But Ben, huh. okay. imagine Ben if there was a worldwide global virus like there might be in the in the world of pure imagination. But also, Could never happened here, Michael. But also, Ben, human babies stopped being born, and they got replaced by human animal hybrids. Oh no, that'd be very unpleasant. Okay, okay. That would be very unpleasant, Michael. I wouldn't be into that at all. Now, Ben, imagine one man knows this is happening for some reason and he goes off into the woods with his human baby, human baby animal hybrid baby. Okay. And he raises that human baby animal hybrid baby in the woods, Ben. Okay. For 10 years. Right. And he has a totally normal childhood and he's just a normal boy called Gus. Oh, yeah. But Ben, there's a whole flipping apocalypse going on and at some point Gus is going to come face to face with the real world post-apocalypse. Okay, that's fair enough. That's what it is, Ben. That's the story of the of the show Sweet Tooth based on the comic by Jeff Lemire. Your doppelganger, Jeff Lemire. Yeah, the guy I also, look like who writes... Also called Sweet Tooth. Who is wildly more successful than me. Yes, Wildly. Yes, yes, yes. Wildly. Yes. Here's the funny thing though, right? Yes. You, you told me about the comic book Sweet Tooth. 
And I'm like, oh, that sounds grim and horrible. I don't want to watch it. Yeah. And now I've watched a couple of episodes of the Netflix series Sweet Tooth. And Benjamin, if you remember back, harken your mind back a couple of weeks, reminisce, uh, if as it were. Imagine you're a young Hugh Jackman. I'm there. Right? And remember that we were talking about how generic and boring it looked. Yes. Benjamin. Yeah. Someone should go back in time and fire those trailer makers. Oh, no. Because they've made a complete balls of it. Because Sweet Tooth, Ben, is actually very good. Oh, look at that. It's actually quite good, Ben. You got me. They they got us all. They got us all with a dodgy trailer. Do you, do you know why that is? Go on. Do you know why the trailer is all dark and moody and grim? No, it wasn't. That was the problem. Our problem oh. with it was that it looked very generic. It looked very generic. And cheap. And cheap. We don't like generic and cheap. No. Uh, Netflix does, but we don't. Yeah, um, Jupiter's Legacy, for example. <laughs> Jupiter's Legacy, for example. The one season show, Jupiter's Legacy. Yes. Uh, no, Michael, there's been a bit of debate among fans of the comic book. Because in the comic book, Michael, it's it's a very traditional Jeff Lemire story in that it makes you cry and give yes. up on life. Yes. Because um, Jeff Lemire, Michael, despite being wildly successful... Yes, and your doppelganger. Um, he's a very sad man. He's always, he's always doing sad stuff. He, he has a bad relationship with his dad. His dad left him, he's I would got say. a terrible relationship with his papa. <laughs> um, it's no good. Sorry, no. Jeff. If you're listening, man, reach out. Just, you know, <laughs> get some help. Well, Jeff, don't, not to us, though. We are not qualified. We'll just make jokes. No, but if you'd like to do interviews about your stuff or be the co host to a podcast that I'm pretty much done with, uh, jump <laughs> on board. <laughs> you know? I, think he's t- I think he's taller than you, too. I mean, th- 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 the list of things that Jeff Lemire surpasses me on goes on. Get him in here. Get him in Get here. Him in. He's, He's just a better Ben. Way more Canadian. That's, I wonder when they put that on the next blurb. He's, He's a, better, a ben. better Ben. Ben, Ben. every time he came over on Sunday to record the podcast, he'd bring a Tim Hortons with him. It would be ah, delicious. I mean, I never bring donuts. No, you never bring donuts or coffee. Benjamin. Stop <laughs> this Jeff Lemire riff, please, and get back um, on point. Sorry. So the, the initial tone of the comic book has been well and well and truly done away with in this show, Michael, and it's focused on hope. So there was a big chat between Jeff Lemire and the the showrunner of Sweet Tooth. Yeah, I've heard of it. And th- they sat down and, and looked at their favourite parts. And Jeff Lemire's matured as a man, and he said, well, I think you should probably focus more on the hopeful parts. And the showrunners yes. agreed. So it's a much yes. more hopeful show. Yes. I've seen it. Benjamin, that's what I was about to say, but I didn't know that that was on purpose. I was about to say, it's the bloody nicest apocalypse ever. Oh, that's good. Now, it's still an apocalypse. Yeah. And there's still horrible shit happening. And it's Jeff Lemire, so someone's dad dies. Inevitably, they have to. someone's it's dad very important. dies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone's dad always dies, Ben. And Ben, there is a lot of peril of stuffed toys. And as you know, Ben... There's only one thing in the world that can make me cry, and it's the children's book, The Velveteen Rabbit. Makes everyone cry. Gets gets me every time, Ben. I can't even, I can barely even talk about it, to be honest. And uh, so there's all that going on. But it's all, it all has a lovely old American man narration. Oh. By, by James Brolin, son, brother of Joss. What? And James... <laughs> The and lesser all, of the Brolins. Yeah, the, the, the lesser spotted Brolin. And it's <laughs> it's all quite nice. Oh, that's and, good, isn't it? Yeah. And it's a it's about it's about looking for hope and life and kindness and humanity oh. in the apocalypse. It's it's very it's an interesting it's an interesting show. It's not grim and horrible the way I thought it was gonna be. So what 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 I didn't want to see, Ben, go on, was a gri- a show which was grim and horrible in tone, but generic in production value. A Teen Titans, for example, yeah. Um, yeah. And this is not grim and horrible in tone. It's quite it's it's quite sad. They tried to make me cry a couple of times, and I was like, "I'm not crying, Jeff Lemire, you absolute son of a bitch." You nearly got um, me, Jeff, but yeah, you're fucked. not getting me this time. And you know, there were times where I was watching it, go, "I just don't want to be watching another program about kids who don't have parents." It's just nobody it's wants kid. to be watching. <laughs> Stop it! Knock it on the head, please. <laughs> but <laughs> I swear to God, Jeff, you don't knock that shit in the head. Yeah, but it, it's quite good, and the the production values of it are actually excellent, and it, they've really set the right kind of 
you, you can, it feels like they're going more for whimsical than the trailer made it look like. You know, you know what the vibe of it a little bit reminded me of Ben, and nowhere near as heightened. Okay, but it reminded me of those um, those kind of early two thousand shows from that guy who did that style. You know the ones I'm talking about the the one with Lee Mack where he can make people come back from the dead and he makes cupcakes. Oh, um, and something about waterfalls. Is that dead? It's not dead to me. It's um, yeah. It looks like it, it feels pushing daisies. Pushing daisies, very good. Pushing and what daisies. was the other one in that kind of oeuvre called? Uh, what what so, happened in that one? You gotta you gotta jog my memory. There was a this... waterfall. Doesn't matter, Ben. This isn't good content. What I'm saying is, it has that a slight kind of slightly unreal vibe to it, but not that far. It's good. I enjoyed it. I actually, yeah, yeah I actually you're, enjoyed it, Ben. So you're on board with it, Michael? I'm on board with it. Will I watch all eight episodes? I don't know. N- not because bloody likely. It's not, a, it's nice and it's fun and it's enjoyable, but it's not a massively compelling story. Like, I don't really care if he finds his mother or not, Ben, I have to admit. Jesus, Michael. I don't care. Michael. What is it? Wonderfalls, it was called. I've never heard of that. Um... It's about a 20-something Niagara Falls souvenir shop. What? Yeah, and it's, she she works there and she works in the souvenir shop and the little figurines and stuff start talking to her. That's mental. Yeah, um, it's Brian Fuller. Uh, oh, I meant to tell you, have you heard about Jeff Lemire's new comic book series? No, is it grim and someone's dad is dead? It's loosely based on the Velveteen Rabbit. <laughs> 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 that joke was purely for you, Michael. Michael, your look, your listen. Go on. Moving on. Um, yes. Michael, this very Wednesday, Wednesday, yes. uh, June 9th, 2021, mm. we will see the premiere of one low key. Oh, let's keep it low key then. Uh, let's keep it low key. Uh, Tom, Hiddles- uh, Tom Hiddleston, otherwise known as the, the one man bloody smoke show that is Tom Hiddleston, the prime cut of Asgardian beef. Yeah. That is Tom Hiddleston. The refined, elegant, silver tongued devil that is Tom Hiddleston is reprising his role as one low key laysmith. Uh, um, I thought his name was Laufison. Uh, it, it depends on which one you. It, it depends. On, we'll get into it, Michael. Don't. All right, we'll get into it in a minute. We'll get into it in a minute. He's picking up his role again. He's going to be hanging out with Owen Wilson. There's going to be a lot of wow. Wow. Um, I want to see. Uh, I want to see him turn into a snake and bite on Wilson. That's what I want to see. I think he might. He might. Do uh, I think he bloody well might. But anyway, we're going to see him doing all kinds of mad stuff, Michael, on the TV show. And I, I said to you, Michael, I said, well, let's do a bloody deep dive on Loki. We don't do it enough. Who even is Loki? Who anyway, even is ben? Loki? Um, so what we're going to be doing for the next few minutes, ladies and gents, um, is we're going to be taking a look at his history in the Marvel universe, and we're going to be taking a look at what we think, what we reckon. Go on. It's probably going to go forward and influence this very televisual show. Oh, very good. Yes. Um, so we're going to have a look at all that and we're going to try and try and make sense of Loki. What even is Loki? You what might ask yourself. What even well, is Loki? In 1962, Michael. 19 dickety two, Ben. 19 dickety two. In the pages of Journey into Mystery, number 85. I've seen it and read it. Of course you have. Of course you have. Because you do a pop culture podcast, Michael. You come pop prepared. Podcast. Weekly you come pop correct. Podcast. Sure, look, sure, listen. Sure, look, Available sure, listen. now on Spotify. Uh, he made his first appearance uh, in opposition to his big blonde brother. Hmm. Um, and it, it was Loki. And Loki that we got initially in the Marvel Universe, Michael, he's just no good. He's just a bad egg, Ben. He's, he's just, just a, a... Go on. He's just a general roust about. Funnily enough, Ben. Go on. As I said, I've seen and read it. Not his brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no yeah. brother shit going on in 1962's Journey into Mystery 85. None of that crap. Very no. closely based on the uh, mythological cycle. The Eddas. yeah. So look, in in, do you want me to get into it, Ben? Do you want me to get you... into? So in 19 Ben. So first of all, right, um, Loki's there, right? He's in Asgard. Oh yeah. You know, a different dimension of time and space, Ben. Not just another planet like it is now, but a different dimension of time and space. It's not even on our plane of existence, Ben. Not even on our plane of existence, Ben. So, Loki, he's he's stuck in a tree, Ben. Oh, no. 
and he's like, oh, I'm stuck in this tree. Now, Ben, I'm going to take a slight diversion because I've also watched, Ben, 19, 1966's The Marvel Superhero Show. Have you ever seen it or heard of it, Ben? Super Friends for Marvel, Michael. No, it's not Super Friends, Ben. For Marvel. It's, no, no, it's not Super Friends for Marvel. It is considerably earlier than Super Friends. It's Super Friends for Marvel. Right, okay, you're sticking with that. Benjamin, the Marvel superhero show is from 1966, which is a very long time ago, Ben. And it was... <laughs> it's, it's very long ago. And Benjamin, it was very cheaply produced. Oh, no. And what I mean by very cheaply produced, Ben, was that it is what we would call now... It's funny, right? It's funny. This whole thing has come around. It's come around 360, Ben. Now, if someone produced this, we would call it a motion comic. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Is it like one of those awful motion comics that we have to watch? It's just a motion comic. They call it a cartoon. They call it an animation in the 60s. But apparently, Ben, they had a, a technique called, I, I can't remember what it's called, Xenoscropia or something like that. And it was basically using photocopying machines to photocopy the original comic book art and then animate the mouths and eyes and sometimes the arms over it. Yeah, okay. And then they get people in doing the voices, Ben. Oh. And some of them, Ben, some of them might be in a phone box. Some of them are in a big empty room just shouting at a microphone that's 25 feet away from them. Nice. Because the audio quality is all over the place. <laughs> Wild are, and varying. <laughs> I mean, Ben, you wouldn't broadcast it today. But, you know, it's 50-something years ago, so, you know, we'll forgive them. Benjamin. Yeah. The the thing is, they just adapted the comic book's whole hog. Oh, whole hog, Panel Michael. for panel. So it's a motion oh. comic. So you can either go back and read this, or you can go back and watch the episode Trapped by Loki. But the funny thing is, because it's the 60s, Loki, despite being Ben, in the comic book, he's described as... Uh, charming and romantic and handsome. Okay. But in the motion comic, they've given him the fake, non-existent Midwestern accent, bad guy accent from the 60s. Oh, good. So he's like, Nah, I'm Loki and I'm trapped in this tree and I've been trapped here in this sniveling way for so long. And uh, I'm getting better now. And I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of this tree and I'm going to get Thor because he put me in this tree, the son of a bitch. So Ben... <laughs> he's in the tree and he can't get out verbatim? of the tree. Yeah, yeah, it's verbatim. <laughs> and he's in the tree and he's like, I want to get out of this tree, but I can't, eh? <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the accent. He's like, I need to get out of this tree, but I'm gonna, I've been trapped here for thousands of years. And Ben, over thousands of years, he has exerted his willpower over the tree because <laughs> to escape from the tree, <laughs> to escape from the tree, Ben, someone in Asgard needs to shed a tear for his predicament. Oh, that's very mythological, Michael. Very that's, that's mythological, a, Ben. That's taken directly from Baldur's cycle. You see, um, that's the thing, Ben. Mm. In in the comic book, he tricks... Ba uh, is it Baldur or Heimdall? I think it's Heimdall. Or maybe they change it between the comic and the show. But he makes a leaf fall off into his eye, which makes him shed a tear. And then he's like, Ha! I've escaped! <laughs> the first thing he does is goes, now, back to Earth, where I'm going to make a prick of myself and beat up that Thor guy. <laughs> so he goes back to Loki, Earth. Loki, I'm here to make a prick of myself. <laughs> I'm going to make a prick of myself and get revenge on Thor through some just being a nuisance. <laughs> Generally being a nuisance. Um, so he goes back to Earth, Ben, and he, he attracts Thor's attention. It doesn't matter how, it's irrelevant. And Thor chases after him, Ben. Go on. And he chases after him by spinning his magic hammer Mjolnir around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Old, the old swingy boy. The old swinging the boy like a helicopter. And it's implicitly stated, Ben, in this that it's the helicopter action that makes Thor fly. It's a classic. So I was like... Yeah, yeah that was but, the original Thor power. But Loki has tricked him, Ben. And he's used the strobing effect of the sunlight shining on the reflecting hammer and spinning around really quickly to hypnotize, hypnotize Thor. What? And he sends him into the zoo to release the animals. Why? A bit of mischief. Just acting the prick. He just wants oh, to make a prick Loki, himself, you, you old he's, he's what we'd call Michael an old chancer here in Dublin. So, yeah. Ben, the thing yeah, is, the hypnotism works on Thor 
Okay. It doesn't work on Donald Blake. Oh, very good, Michael. The wimpy doctor. And Loki relieves Thor of the hammer, but Loki doesn't know that that means he turns back into Donald Blake after 60 seconds. So this whole scheme lasts 60 seconds. <laughs> and then Thor is fine again. <laughs> like, oh, fucking hell, Loki, this is not your best work. So Ben, eventually, right, they chase and they fly around the place. And then eventually, here's what happens. Thor grabs Loki and he throws him in a river. Oh, excellent work from, excellent work from Thor. Because, Ben... Loki's magic powers don't work when he's wet. Oh, it's a classic. Is it? No, it's not. No. I've never heard of that Shite. before. Um, it's, it's not in the myths. So his not powers in the myths don't, at all. His powers don't work when he's wet. So, so Thor soaks him. He dips him in the water, basically. So gets him all wet. And then ties him to the hammer and throws the hammer back to Asgard. What? Yeah, and the hammer flies off to Asgard, deposits Loki back on Asgard, and all the other gods go, oh, he's back. <laughs> look, 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 look what the hammer dragged in. Look what the fucking hammer dragged in. This prick is back. <laughs> How did you get out of that tree? You got around tickling people's eyes. And then the hammer gets back to Thor <laughs> seconds before. It gets back to Thor seconds before he changes back into Donald Blake and then is killed by the hammer. Because if the hammer was coming at him at that speed and then he turned back into Donald Blake, he would have died. Yeah, Madness that would have been no spirit. good. Absolute fucking insanity. Yeah, no good. Oh, that's insane. But yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned, Michael, they're not brothers. They're not brothers. Well, uh, I mean, it, they they don't specifically say, hello, Thor, you famously not my brother. But there's they don't. there's certainly no big deal about them being brothers. Yeah, so th that's interesting. That that was kind of pushed as as the comics went on, and I I don't think it's ever been pushed quite as much, Michael, as it is in the MCU, um, where they are just mm -hmm. canonically two two bros, um, and they have a terrible bond, um, <laughs> and you know whatever ensues from that. But yeah, Marvel comics had this really interesting problem, pretty much until the MCU came along, actually, um on what to do with the mythological aspect of their Thor comics. Um, Go on. Because there's... A, this is a really interesting debate, Michael. Does the does the adaption of Thor and Loki constitute a, some kind of cultural appropriation? Um, oh, because, here we go. I mean, I mean, it's an interesting question, though. It's an interesting question, though. Because, because the Eddas, the poetic Eddas, written by Snurri Snurrison... I'm not mm. even making that up. That's his actual name. Yeah. Um, he laid all that mythological cycle down. And it's a very important religious and ritual examination of ancient Norse culture. Right? Benjamin. And, yes. I could probably get away with adapting it. You probably could, Michael, because there's no copyright in it, Michael. And you'd be grand. Um, but and I, I, don't think it, I don't think it matters so much. Eyebrows. Um, but it's a really oh, get yourself some blonde eyebrows, Michael. I'd watch you in. A I've film got blonde eyebrows, blonde. Ben. Look, you do. You can barely see them on your face. It's very hard to tell how you're I, feeling. Are you excited? Are you angry? Are you sad? What's going on with Michael? Join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, on our brand new premiere. What's going on with Michael? Where we have contestants from around Dublin come on and try to guess the emotions that Michael is feeling, and if they get it, they win a brand new Toyota Prius. Toyota <laughs> Prius, Benjamin. Yeah. I'm doing sceptical, look. You're very sceptical. <laughs> Talk about the Eddas. <laughs> so the Eddas, Michael, are, are huge swathes of Norse mythology, and they're very, very incomplete. Um, that is to say that there is a whole canon of Norse stories that we'll never get access to. Um, because much like ourselves, Michael, um, here in Ireland, it was an oral culture. Um, and that means that it was passed down through oral storytelling. And if you didn't write it down, Michael, you didn't get to hold on to it. Stop sniggering on the other end of the mic. What are you in your bloody sixth year bloody Irish class? For God's sake. For God's sake. Oh, do the podcast with me. He's very mature, they said. Very mature, they said. They lied to me. They. So they anyway. only pass it down orally, Ben. Uh, they only <laughs> for fuck's sake. It's disgusting. Um, so what happens there, Michael, is uh, Marvel has this really interesting issue with how do we reconcile this huge Norse canon with mm -hmm. 
a superhero comic. And Michael, they were overthinking it. Go on. They were overthinking it big time. So they used to make these different things. Um, and they used to try and come up with like literary explanations for why this was. So the gods are reinvented every thousand years or so. And they forget their previous story. Um, and they break different cycles and start new cycles. So for example, maybe in Earth 616 a thousand years ago, Loki and Thor were in a mythological setting and they were running around Asgard. And then suddenly yeah. a brand new cycle started and Thor needed to be a new type of hero and Loki needed to be a new type of villain. And it was overthinking it, Michael. And what they did instead, what you should have done just done instead was, uh, oh, they're aliens um, they're that aliens. inspired the myth loosely. They're aliens. But Ben, they did that in the MCU, remember? Yeah, and it worked great. Um, but what we got in the Earth 616 continuity of the comics, Michael, is a whole bunch of stories that are very strangely based on the original myths. So one that we'll be looking on, uh, one that we'll be looking at on collecting issues, the bi-weekly comic book book club, um, is Thor, uh, is Thor Blood Brothers, which is a tale about Thor and Loki in a mythological setting where Loki wins and he takes over yeah. Asgard. Um and it's a very meta kind of comic and it's very interesting, but it's heavily tied to mythology. Another very popular comic, Michael, is 2011's, 2011's Loki miniseries. Four issues where it depicts Loki's great betrayal of the gods, which was the murder of Baldur. Um, so Loki convinced, uh, oh, I'm going to forget his name, Hod, uh, the god of cold and dark. Um, who is blind, he convinces him to kill his twin brother Balder in a very deception oh, switcheroo no. kind of way. And that's what leads to his falling out of favour with the gods. Because once upon a time, Michael, Loki was yes. invaluable to the gods. He was an He's unbelievable asset to the gods. He was a real smart egg. Mm. Yeah. Um, but then, Michael, the genius that is the Marvel Cinematic Universe said, or, or, just aliens. Not. We could just yeah. not. Um, yeah. Aliens. And then we got Tom Hiddleston. And the modern interpretation of Loki in the comics, which we'll get to in just a second, would not exist without Tom Hiddleston. Just is that your contention here, Benjamin? Um, that, that is my contention here, Michael. That is my contention here. Because even up until Siege in 2014, I think. I'm going to have to look that up. It was one of the big Marvel comic events, right? Your yes. Civil War, the, your Secret Wars. Siege, Ben, was when Asgard landed on Earth near Brankston, Bronston, Alabama, Bra Braxton, was it Braxton? Tony Braxton. Tony Braxton, no. near Tony Braxton's house. Yeah. And yeah, that was the, that was when uh, Asgard had been displaced from its own realm, mm. Michael. And I had to find somewhere new. Believe it or not, that entire little siege storyline there, Michael, was the inspiration for its moving to a, a small town um, in Infinity War. Bra That's why they're on... They're, yeah. They're in a little town. The one in Infinity War makes a lot more sense, Ben. Being, yeah. A lot more sense than Tony Braxton's Tony house. Tony Braxton's house. Um, She's like, mm, I don't need no man. I don't remember any Tony Braxton songs, Ben. I just can't remember any. <laughs> I don't know any Tony Braxton songs, so you're miles ahead Benjamin. of me. Um, anyway, yes. Asgard, it was on Earth, and then Norman Osborn and all his bad mates were like, oh, we got to get rid of this. Yeah, so this was the the Hammer years of Shield, where Shield or uh, the Hammer years of Marvel Comics, where Shield was replaced by Hammer, and it was in the wake of the Civil War event storyline, and America was so scared that they turned to someone with an iron fist to get the job done, and who was it? Donald Norman Trump. Osborn. <laughs> very good, very good. So once again, Marvel Comics predicted the future, um, and Michael. It didn't make any sense. But anyway, Loki had been working as part of a cabal that Norman Osborn had put together, similar to Marvel's Illuminati, which sees Namor, Reed Richards, Charles Xavier, uh, Doctor Strange, other people come together. The, the, the smart people yeah. uh, are a little cabal and they make decisions for the betterment of humanity. Terrible idea. Ben, um, ben. Yeah. They, were they didn't want to call themselves the cabal. They wanted to call themselves the Illuminatis, but it didn't make any sense. Didn't make any sense, Michael. So uh, he's working there to bring uh, Asgard to his needs. And it's a pretty interesting depiction of Loki because what happens is, Michael, yes. what happens is bloody uh, Asgard comes tumbling down and crashes into Earth. Because of the sentry, Ben. Because of the sentry. Because he's a big old dickhead, Michael. He's mad. He's as mad he's as a mad. box of brushes. 
He's bleeding mental. Um, so anyway, uh, Loki then has his big. Uh, that's this is Loki's great sin in the Marvel comics. It's it's very similar uh, to the mythological cycle because at the end of Siege and spoilers for a comic that came out twelve years ago. Twelve years ago. Yeah. Twelve years ago. Um, Balder dies at the end, and so once again, the death of Balder is what casts Loki out from Asgardian society. Um, and within that, Michael, the wheels start. The wheels start to turn in go on, right go around on. the same time, Michael, as none other than one Tom Hiddleston, Tom Hiddleston takes over the role. And what happens there, Michael, is all of that comes together and then Loki has to go, kind of go on his own little redemption arc. He goes off on a pilgrimage. And what we get after that is his turn in the Young Avengers, where he plays a very young Loki. He's a little boy. 12 years old. He's a little boy. Um, and then, Michael, we get what is arguably the most formative tale of Loki in the last 15 years and that's Agent of Asgard oh is that where he's a sexy lady it's where he's sometimes a sexy lady Michael he was a sexy lady Michael in the the evil cabal of baddies oh that makes um, sense doesn't and it and that's then? where the notion of uh, say again that makes sense doesn't it and that's where the that's where the notion of Loki as a gender fluid creature kind of came in. Um, there's a whole debate in one of those comics where it's like, "I thought you were a man," and he's like, "What does it matter?" Yeah. Um, it and matter? they're like, "What? You either are or you aren't." And there's a whole debate on, "Oh, oh well, what what is the the logic?" I mean, very very early days, Michael, for gen uh, for identity politics and comics. But you're, hey, if we knew you were a woman, we wouldn't have let you into our secret club. Oh, bloody hell. Um, yeah, probably. Something like that. Anyway, the Agent of Asgard storyline sees him very much in a similar role to what I think we're going to see him in in Loki on June 9th. Oh, go on. Um, where he's gone around doing little missions for uh, the All-Mother, who is Freya, um, because the All-Father's out for the count. He's in his Odin sleep. He's so lazy. Um He's such a lazy git. Oh, 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 I'm gonna go have a little nap for for about for about twenty years. What, what oh, a lazy oh, boy! I'm very tired. After my millennia of bloody work, get over it, Odin. Jesus Christ. Um, but anyway, then we get the uh, agent of Loki idea, and he's very much just Tom Hiddleston in a comic playing Loki. Limited power set, Ronda and Rand. Ben, yeah. how was he a boy and a man at the same time? So, you see, oh, Michael, oh. I have some of the best questions, oh. It's cash for questions over here. Yeah, M Michael, this again was an attempt by by various writers to be very literary and be like, oh, well, you see, uh, myths are stories that pervade our culture and they're, you know, flexible things. So Loki can be in two things at once. Yes, Loki died after the events of such and such, but now he's back in a younger form because perhaps that's what Loki wants. Um, now, the, the crux of that Young Avengers storyline, Michael, is that Loki doesn't know why he's stuck in the form of a child. Mm. He's like, why am I a small boy? And the resolution to that, Michael, is a load of Jungian codswallop. Oh, go on. It's, mm, don't you think this might be your own subconscious punishment for your immature actions causing the death of your brother? Mm. Mm. Um, and then once Loki realises it was himself all along, ta-da! He's a sexy lady again. Load of codswallop. Load of codswallop. Benjamin, I thought you liked Jungian archetropes. I do, but I don't like subconscious Freudian muck. Um, oh. It was it was you all along. So it's Freud um, you have to issue with, but not young. Uh, oh, Freud's a real dick. You millennials. Yeah, us millennials. Oh, we're to be blamed for everything. Believe You're always not. going on about Freud. <laughs> um, we're to be blamed for everything. Um, but anyway, sorry. So the, the, these are kind of the modern incarnations of old Loki. Um, and they are a far cry, Michael, from his mythological or origins as a, a young man. Far cry. Benjamin, how come, he's yeah. a, how come he's an ice giant, but he's small? Uh, so, within the within the realm of Norse mythology, Michael, the land of the giants, Jotunheim, yeah. is... Um, sorry, the land of the giants, Jotunheim, is... Uh, depending on which Eddie you read and which translation of the Eddie you read, giants is like the name of a race or right, an ethnicity. But they're not that big. Uh, but they're not necessarily that big. However, in the Marvel comics, they're big blue boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
no, giant hold on a blue boys. Yeah. Hold on a second. You're saying that the giants who live in Jotunheim aren't giant. It depends on which translation giants. you read. Mm. They're just called giants. Right, but they're not that big. But they're not that big. They should have just been but called it, frost normals. But it really depends on which version of it you read. Because in other versions, uh, Odin's father, uh, Ymir, is a giant. And he's the one that isn't makes Odin's the father, earth. Isn't Odin's father Boar? Uh, ooh. Ooh. I could be wrong there. I'll have to check that out. Anyway. All right. Um, His murdering of his father is what makes the earth. Oh. Um, I think you're thinking of the Greek gods, Ben. I probably am. Oh, no, yeah, I wait. Know. No, no. I'm just trying to Thor, confuse you. No, no. Odin's murder of his father makes the uh, it makes Norse Earth. That's that's the creation tale. Mm. So if, if you're taking it, if you're taking a dip in the El River, Michael, you're yeah. swimming in uh, Thor's granddad's sweat. Ugh. Mm-mm. I've Mm-mm. seen websites like that. Oh, Michael. Not good. Not good shame websites. on you. Stay away. From um. Me. But anyway, within that we'll mythological sure cycle. Um, that kind of Jotun form of of Loki is is very very interesting. So his mother is a giant Tess, mm. <laughs> and like a, a a very large woman called Tess. A very a very a very large woman called Tess. Big <laughs> Tess, they call her around the Asgardian pubs. <laughs> big All right, Tess. Big Tess. <laughs> I was the oh, I love. It's oh, me, big Tess. me bananas. <laughs> 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 I would watch. I would watch North Enders, uh, <laughs> the British soap opera based on Asgardian gods. Oh, I fuck off, that. giant Tess! <laughs> oh, I've gone Australian there for some reason. Do you I don't know, know what? Why. Thor, he's some cocky prick. That Thor, <laughs> um, going on about his hammer. It's not even that big. <laughs> Our Sif went out with him last week down the club. Tiny, she says. Tiny. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would watch the shit out of that. North Enders coming soon. From BBC, um, but yeah. So uh, within that, Michael, that's why I said uh, you heard me say a little bit earlier, Laysmith, and you say you said Laufey son, um, yes. and it depends on which title you, th- you take. Laysmith is a very rough translation for the Smith of Lies, the Maker of Lies, um, and that's oh. one title that he holds. Laufey son is son of Laufey, and Laufey is his giant father. Oh Ben, I've just looked up Giant Tess, and that joke has been done in the television show Disenchantment. Oh, for fuck's sake. Fuck's sake, Matt, groaning. Oh, Very I upsetting. I a nickel for every time Matt groaning beat me to a punchline. <laughs> yeah. Well, he does. Well, he does actually have nickels yeah, yeah. for every time so he's, he's done that. Yeah, he's That's not right. a good show. I've watched it. People didn't like it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is not good. Anyway, um, sorry. Back to Loki. Um, so he's kind of had this great career, but if it wasn't for Tom Hiddleston... Who will be yep. seeing very soon on our screens yet again? Don't think Loki would have the popularity he has. He was just a big horned, creepy guy stuck yeah. in a tree with yeah. a vaguely Midwestern accent. Yeah, I, I couldn't do it, Benjamin. Yeah, he wasn't really. Uh, uh, he's he's doing the classic basically. What what Tom Hiddleston has done is subjected Loki to the the curse of all popular characters. Um, as they say, Ben, you either die the villain or you live long enough to see yourself become an antihero. I mean that's that's par for the course in pop culture today, Michael. We're, we're inundated with your Cruellas and yeah. your your bloody Maleficents, and we're soon to be getting an Ursula um, from the thing. And that's what happens. The, the longevity of these villains is like, but what? But what if they had human motivations? Mm? Your Venoms, Ben. Yeah, exactly. I saw one of the the one of my favorite tweets, Michael. And I wouldn't normally be a man for talking about the L tweets now. Yes, you, um, would. you love tweets. You're always on but Twitter. The, the New York Times published an article that says, actually, if you ignore the uh, the multiple felonies and the attempts to murder puppies, Cruella Deville has always been one of D- Disney's most uh, most human villains. Mm. And then uh, somebody just replied to them very, very quickly and said, actually, if you take away the uh, mass genocide and murder, Hitler was a great leader. And it's just the same logic. And it's very strange that this is happening. That's um, the second time in two weeks we've made that point about Hitler, Ben. I think it's probably time for us to stop. <laughs> Bring Hitler up in every episode. We, we've run the natural course of the internet, Michael, where all yep. arguments devolve to Hitler comparisons yeah, yeah. and it's game Let's over. Let's wrap it up there. All right, we'll call it there. Ladies and gentlemen, are you excited to see Loki on I your am. screens again? You are. Yeah, i got to watch it on Wednesday. 
I'm going to watch it on Wednesday too. Um, so my, uh, you can get in touch with us a bunch of ways and let us know what you think. Um, we are on the interwebs. You, I, ruined your, I ruined your wrap up and now you're lost. You did. I was just thrown off. Booked from my, my noble steed of wrapping up. Um, but anyway... You can find us on the interwebs at www.showmreview.com S-E-O-M-R-A-B-E-A-G.com It means Tony Rubin Irish. You can also find us on Instagram at showmreview.com Same spelling. Same meaning though. Also. You can now find us on Twitter, Michael. Get up on Twitter. At, at Listensher. Um, and you can let us know what you think up there. We'd love to have you you follow us and give us all your ideas and, and tweet at us and make us feel real special. Unless, um, unless you think Hitler did nothing wrong. Then stay away from us. In which case, get the fuck off Twitter. We were doing um, a joke. It was a joke. We, it was a we joke. made the same joke two weeks in a row, but that doesn't mean we believe it. That's not a pattern yet. Third time's the charm. Um, so, uh, you can also find us on... Uh, did, we, did we rebrand the Discord? I, I didn't remember. do it yet, but hop up on that Discord there. I'll, 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 <laughs> hop up on that Discord, baby. I'll have done it by tomorrow. Um, you'll find a link to it down below. In the description uh, Ladies and gentlemen You can join us In a week's time Where we'll be taking a look At Critics on the Seesaw How Has the reception Of popular culture And its criticism Changed over different decades Oh that's fascinating Ben It is Michael And you would say that Because it was your bloody topic That's it from us Bye 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 See you next week Sure look at Sure listen Sure Nailed Is that it. what it's called <laughs>